Hey everybody, here we are with a special edition video today. We're gonna to be talking a little bit about Saga, about SMS. We're talking a little bit about some need to know items. And we have a very special guest here. Why don't you introduce yourself, Andrew? Yes, hey, I am Andrew Watson and I am one of the Android developers on the Solana mobile team. Awesome, and we're gonna be asking Andrew all kinds of questions to kind of fill you guys in on what you need to know about the upcoming Saga phone, which by the way, dev kits have dropped as of this recording or will be dropping very soon. Stay tuned, right? Yeah, stay tuned. Stay tuned. Um, but anyway, yeah, so let's start asking some questions. Let's get some need to knows out of the way. Jacob, you got any questions? Cool. Uh, so first off, just like basic for those that don't know, like what is Saga and what makes it special? Yeah, so the Saga itself is a really, really high-end Android smartphone uh, that has some special stuff on it, namely the Seed Vault, which is a hardware implementation of uh, secure seed storage. And so uh, it is uh, fully in this uh, environment called the, the, the Trusted Execution Environment. It's uh, protected from the uh, host OS. And so it's an incredibly safe place to store your seed phrase. Um, and uh, have it with you on your phone, uh, which is really awesome. And then we've added some additional software to support the seed vault. And so that is the, what the saga brings to the table. Okay, so with the seed vault, like it's separated from the OS, meaning like the main OS can't see anything that goes on. It can't see like your yes. private key and things like that. Yes. Yes, it is completely separate from the host Android OS. In fact, it runs its own little mini version of Android. I'm pretty sure it's a little mini version of Android. And so uh, when you actually do anything that is interacting with the secure portion of the seed vault, it's actually taking over the screen and, and drawing itself to the screen. And again, the host OS can't see it. You can't screenshot it. You can't do anything. It's really cool. Oh, fascinating. And was that developed in-house? Like who created that actual seed vault? That is being done by our partner, Awesome. Nice. In, 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 alongside the rest of the, you know, the development of the phone itself and that sort of thing. Very cool. Sounds awesome. Um, and then like with the developer kits going out, like as a developer, say I don't know anything on developing on Saga. Most people don't. It's like, what do I need to know to actually start development on Saga? Yeah, the, the, the nice thing is that the way to develop on Saga is the same way that you would develop on any other Android device. Um, so if you're doing native Android development, you can use Android Studio. If you're doing uh, React Native, um, you know you can use React Native tooling, which I think ends up talking to Android Studio as well. But as far as the development flow, uh, you know the, the developer tooling, the way you would do it, it'd be the exact same way as uh, developing on on Android in general. And so what I would say for people wanting to get, you know, kind of get into it, um, you know, you don't have to go and look at anything Saga centric to start. The best place to start would be to figure out, are you developing a native app? Are you developing a React, React native app? And then start from there and learn how to kind of get that pro process bootstrapped. Okay, so say I don't have like a Saga, like yes. I know that there's things like the Sea Vault, like how do yes. I develop for it without a Saga? Yes, well, so the good news is that um, the Seed Vault is predominantly meant to be accessed by Solana wallets. And so it is the Solana uh, ecosystem wallets that have uh, opted in and will hopefully continue to opt in to supporting the Seed Vault. Uh, on device dApps, React Native or um, you know native dApps, uh, really don't have to worry about talking to Seed Vault per se. Uh, those apps, uh, for those apps, what you want to be looking at is the mobile wallet adapter, which is a way for your on device dApp to talk to an on device wallet. And so uh, the nice thing is, is that if you can in your, if your app needs to initiate a transaction, if your app is, is performing uh, you know, on-chain operations, uh, you'll be doing that through the mobile wallet adapter. And then any wallet can pick it up and, and respond to that, that transaction and execute it on your behalf. If you want to test your app with the Seed Vault, then you, can have an, you need to have a crypto Solana wallet on your Saga. You can start testing your flows from your app to the wallet, which then interacts on your behalf for the Seed Vault. Okay, makes sense. 
And then also like for your development purposes, like if you're building a D app and you obviously want it to be a mobile D app, yes. you basically, your on-ramp to the rest of the community through this like mobile dev space is going to be the Solana D app store, correct? Like that's how you can put your D app on. Any yes. Saga. Yes, 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 yes. You will be able to publish your DAP on the Solana mobile DAP store. And that will be, uh, you know, sort of a single point of contact to go and look for uh, on device crypto dApps, which is going to be really, really nice. You can go there and find, you know, we'll have categories and all sorts of stuff for finding apps by, you know, of, of various, uh, various kinds. So um, that is uh, getting opened up a little bit later. There'll be another announcement for that, <laughs> uh, but it's coming. Cool. And then I've heard a, a lot of things about like the Solana mobile stack. Yes. Um, so like, how do I I, like, what is it? How do I use it to develop for Saga and yeah. like mobile D apps? Yes, yes. So yeah, the the the, the Solana mobile stack is sort of uh, we're we're thinking of it as just all the software that we're putting together to support mobile DAP development. And so one of those things is the Seed Vault SDK. But again, that's only really relevant for wallets. Um, there's uh, something with Solana Pay. Um, uh, it's for you know various things that that uh, people might want to do there, um, and then but the big one, the big one in my mind is what I mentioned before is the mobile wallet adapter, and so the vast majority of on-device apps uh, are going to be most concerned with mobile wallet adapter, and again like. Just how when you go to your any any like Solana DAP website, when you click connect to your wallet, there's a little piece of JavaScript code that well, I actually think it's actually a big, it's actually pretty complicated. Uh, there's a piece of JavaScript code that connects that web DAP to your in-browser wallet. That's an adapter. The, the adapter is what connects the website to your wallet of choice. Similarly, the mobile wallet adapter is what connects your on-device DAP to your on-device wallet and so the idea is that uh you know we're not trying to be a wallet uh, with the sms stack we want the wallets to do wallet things and we want them to be responsible for signing transactions and managing all that stuff it can actually be pretty complicated to you know be a wallet and filter out spam and all sorts of stuff like that so the mobile wallet adapter is a really nice way for uh, app developers to have a way to communicate and do uh, transactions and stuff like that and then uh, leave the rest up to the wallets. And then again, from there, if there is a seed vault present, it can use the seed vault to uh, sign the transactions. But if there is no seed vault, it can do transactions just the way it has been before. All of us have, you know, mobile wallets and we're, we're our, our seed phrases are stored very securely, just not on a hardware, uh, you know, a hardware implementation. And it'll just work the same. Interesting. So like in theory, because you can leverage signing the way that you traditionally would, if it was possible through different, you know, corporate motives, you could run these kinds of like mobile Solana D apps on any smart device, yes. like any smartphone. Yes. You wouldn't yes. need it to be a saga per se. It does not need to be a saga. Nope. Nope. Interesting. Maybe we'll see some okay. stuff shake out with that. I know that stuff's actually changing in Europe right now around that. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Well, and so, you know, in my mind, that is one of the most exciting things about the SMS stack is that it actually isn't dependent on Saga. Uh, it, it, it will work on any Android device. And, you know, um, you could release your crypto dApp on the Play Store, for example, like you could try and see if it gets doesn't get rejected. <laughs> um, you know, who knows, right? But uh, then there's also the so the, so the Solana dApp store is going to be just on the Saga for starters. Um, and so, you know, that'll be nice, but, uh, but yeah, so, you know, who knows where this ecosystem will, will go and, and how these apps will become available, but at least in general, you're not, you're not, uh, uh siloing yourself to just developing for the saga. If you're developing these react native or native Android dApps, right. Uh, they, they will be runnable on other Android phones and who knows, maybe even, maybe even other types of devices too. <laughs> <laughs> cool. That's awesome to know though. I'm glad. Yeah. You mentioned yeah. That. All right, cool. I think we have one final question that I'll throw your way is like, say I'm a new developer. I, I just got my saga in a shipment. Um, I got my DVT unit. Um, we're all good to go. Um, what would you recommend me to do first so that I can start like j just hitting the ground running and developing on the saga? 
Yeah, I mean, I would say, you know, look into React Native or native Android development. Uh, Google has awesome developer documentation for, uh, you know, developing all manner of Android apps. There's a lot of good React Native documentation. You know, probably a lot of, a lot of people are coming to this with like a, a web app, for example. And so, you know, React Native could be compelling there. Um, and then from there, going to uh, our GitHub, Solana Mobile GitHub. It's just github.com forward slash Solana dash mobile, right? Yes, Solana Dash Mobile, um, and checking that out. But then another big thing I would recommend is going to our Discord, uh, joining our Discord because we're all there. You know, we want to answer questions. Um, you know, this isn't interacting with uh, you know a blockchain is is sort of a different type of mobile app development. You know, initiating transactions, these sorts of things. It's it's a little different, and so. Um, you know, you can come on the Discord, ask questions where we really want to help, that sort of thing. So uh, that's uh, discord.gg forward slash Solana Mobile as well. But uh, everything, everything can be found on our website, which is solanamobile.com. Well, thank you everyone for listening on with us today. Uh, we're just going through a technology dive with Solana Mobile. Look forward to getting y'all's uh, developer units and developing on Saga. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, Thank you. thanks, Andrew. Appreciate the time, Thank man. You. Yeah.